Hello folks, welcome back to the video. So today I'm going to tell you why I think Jeremy Fragrance is still the number one fragrance YouTuber. Before we get into that, I don't know where this intro came from, but I once had therapy, a few therapy sessions a few years ago. And the guy told me I had a lot of anger suppressed within myself. So I've always been drawn to YouTube channels where people, or you know, comedy in general and stuff, where people let out that anger. I bet you after you watch this, if you've got any internal anger, you might just feel a little bit better. I know I did. Life is too short for me to blow smoke up your ass. You want to buy it, you buy it. You, you don't want to buy it, don't buy it. They give me jack shit, jack shit, jack, 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 jack shit. It's when you behave like a dick that I really get pissed off. When you behave like a dick that I really get pissed off. Pissed off, pissed off, pissed, 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 pissed off. You know what, just fuck off, fuck off, and leave me alone. Fuck off, fuck off, fuck off, fuck off. and leave me alone. I don't want to get involved in your petty bullshit, your petty crap, your petty pathetic life, your petty, 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 petty pathetic life. You really piss me off. I loved him. Of course, so did I. I really loved him, Bear. I know. So did I. And, 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 and Tim, t I loved him as well. Both those boys, I love. They stabbed me in the back. Stabbed me in the back. Stabbed me. Stabbed me. Stabbed me. Stabbed me. Stabbed me in the back. They stabbed me in the back. Stabbed me in the back. Stabbed me. Stabbed me. Stabbed me. Stabbed me. Stabbed me in the back. I've had enough. And, and that's that, that's how I feel. I really get pissed off. Pissed off. Pissed 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 off. I really get pissed off. Pissed off. Pissed 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 off. I really get pissed off. Pissed 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 off. I really get pissed off. Pissed 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 off. I've had enough. I've had enough. Had enough. I really get pissed off. Pissed off. Pissed 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 off. I really get pissed off. Pissed 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 off. I really get pissed off. Pissed 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 off. And I offered you a strap, then you reneged on it. You know what? Just. Fuck off and leave me alone. Fuck off, fuck off, fuck off, fuck off, fuck off, and leave me alone. Fuck off, fuck off, fuck off, and leave me alone. Leave me alone. I don't want anything to do with it, okay? I got my own life to lead. I don't need your validation. I don't need to give you validation. I really don't give a fuck. I feel a little bit better after that, don't you? Okay, Jeremy Fragrance then, you know, fun topic. Fun topic, always I return to it now and again. Maybe I'm being controversial in what I'm saying here. I've picked a few fights with him recently. I'm only kidding around. I was looking at some of his recent videos and I thought, you know what? Whatever you think of him, he is still the biggest YouTuber with a fragrance dedicated channel by a fairly big distance. I think he's got some competitors now, people like Curly Fragrance, and her friend Miss Fresh are kind of out doing him in views sometimes. And they have a great channel. And there are a few others too, particularly the female reviewers, getting very, very popular. But I think Jeremy still, you've got to be honest, he brings something unique and different, okay? And I'm going to point out, I think he's taken a new direction in the last month or two. He's moved back to Europe now from Miami. Not sure things worked out so perfectly for them, for him then, don't know. And he's doing some really good stuff. So my contention is this. He's, he's number one for a number of big reasons. I'm going to show a couple of clips. We'll show a recent video where he went to a niche fragrance store somewhere in Spain first. Good day guys, Jeremy Fragrance here at the Niche Perfumes Sevilla. I show you 10 niche fragrances you must know. Hey guys, and I'm here with Maria. Okay, simple things about him that make him better than most people is just him the way he looks and his charisma. Let's be honest, you may not like him. Many of you out there don't. He is one of the best looking, he is the best looking male fragrance reviewer and he's the best presented. He currently does this white suit thing for a while. I think he was all in black. He's in incredibly svelte, fit, physical shape. I think he's in his very early 30s. Fantastic head of hair, but he also, you know, some of it's lucky. Okay, he's got good genes, he's handsome, but he must work out a lot to keep in such good physical shape. And he's picked a way of dressing that looks really good. You see other YouTubers out there, even the big ones. So I'm talking about his charisma. He does the spin there. Okay, you may think that's just douchey. Who could stand in a shop like that, a niche fragrance store, do a spin like that and have such confidence? Let's No disrespect to any of the people that I'm going to mention now, but I'll mention a couple. Can you imagine me, no, red adolescence, gent sense, looking that confident, looking that good on camera, me too, I wouldn't. 
He's got something magical that you can't bottle. Let's just be honest. And he has charisma, he has confidence, and uh, he, he looks good in a suit. He looks amazing. That's part of his appeal. And you, you, he's got that film star-esque quality. Uh, and you've got to hand it that, that to him. You've got to give him that, guys. You really do. This list is not particularly for people that only want compliments and sexy. It's really for niche. You want to smell different. And in this video, he's going to talk about 10 niche fragrances you must know. And he, did, he does demonstrate a lot of genuine knowledge of niche fragrances. Now, although his channel, for the most part, has been tending to focus on popular designer fragrances, Versace, Eros, Bleu de Chanel, people get bored by that. He's just playing the game of YouTube. That's what you have to do maybe to get more views. He plays to his audience, which is young guys. He's well known to people outside the fragrance community. I've got friends with kids. They've heard of Jeremy Fragrance. They haven't heard of Mr. Smelly. They haven't even heard of other big channels like Curly Fragrance yet, or maybe they haven't heard of Big Beard Business or Gentsense, all of whom I totally respect. This guy is the biggest deal by a long, long way, and he, he's done that by playing to what YouTube likes and talking about obvious fragrances because there's more views in it. But here he's going to demonstrate he knows a lot, probably more than me, about all the new niche releases out there. He knows about notes. He probably knows more than me about fragrance composition and notes. I, I really mean that. I'm not taking the piss. And he demonstrates that to the, in this video, of which I'll just show a few very brief clips. Okay, we keep going with the next one, which is Golden Powder by House of Oud. And this is... One of my personal favorites, sadly it doesn't last so long, mm, it is a very likable oud. For all of you that love 24 Gold or Tom Ford's Amber Absolute, this is in that world and it's very much possible that you will love it and this bottle design is just fantastic. But it's not a must have, but sample it definitely. All of these are not must have. But We've been moving for this video the whole time, the whole time, the whole time to get to this fragrance right here. And the guy, Zerjo, he bought this company. This is possibly the most, um, I don't want to say it, I want to say a little bit like a curse word, but I know that this fragrance is loved by many people and it's also the top seller of the brand, it's called Kimi. But to some people, this smells, let's say, extremely offensive. Oh, extremely animalic. Not only does it have oud, and not only it has the civet, which is from the, you know, Google civet from the civet cat extracted, like from the musk type of thing. It also has castorium, which is super animalic. Hey, if you're bold enough, Order yourself, Kimi. So he knows about Bodicea, the Victorious. He's talking about that really funky fecal one, Kemi. He describes them. I didn't play loads of it, but he describes them really well. He understands the notes. He does know his fragrance stuff. He has still got it. If he wants to turn it on, he can tell you a lot about niche fragrances. He knows the industry and he's got the knowledge. I'm sorry, guys. People say he knows nothing about fragrances. He's just a clown. He is a clown sometimes, but he does know what he's talking about. I really, really do believe that. Next up, he gives us a really good insight into what fragrances are all about. I quite enjoyed this. Fragrances are a very specific type of a product because fragrances are a triangle synergy of three things. An everyday product like a toothbrush, everyday, an art piece like a uh, painting, because it's art, with the history, and a luxury good like you put it somewhere, like a golden Rolex, like a Louis Vuitton handbag. So when somebody sees it, he sees, oh, he has Crete fragrances, he has Chanel fragrances. So fragrances are very interesting, and that's why it's also so interesting to talk or not interesting but that's why it's so difficult to grab well what is the justification for a high price of a fragrance well because it's so much in between all these three things that i named you you can't doesn't matter you just buy if you have if you want to buy it and if you don't you don't want to buy it and that's it i for my sake because my fragrances are also very expensive what you want to pay is what is fine, but if, if, if I would tell you the sweet spot would be something like the 70 to 110 dollars with the Chanel's and the Dior's because they have the coolest brands, they have the fantastic perfumers 
and they have the great sexy perfumes. So he makes a good point there, you know, he's, he's talked in, in this video and a couple, I think it might have been the one a few days or before or after this about Roger Parfums and they're very expensive and stuff and he talks about his own brand which is quite expensive and he makes a good point there about the price of the fragrance and you know, is it worth it? Well it's worth it if you want to buy it. Uh, the, the price of the ingredients probably, I don't know, uh, you know, maybe in a Roger Parfum isn't that much more, maybe no more, I don't know, than a Chanel perfume, but it costs more because it's got that added level of uber niche prestige. And it's up to you if you want to spend the money on it. And if you've got enough disposable income, you pay for the brand and you pay for the artistry. Jeremy once said that you don't pay when you buy a Picasso painting for the cost of the canvas and the paint that he used and the paintbrush that he had to use. You pay for the artistry and you pay for the just the exclusiveness of it being a Picasso. And in a small way, it's like that with a Roger or maybe a Zergio for a Creed uh, compared to a Chanel and then down to compared to just getting Davidoff Cool Water or Peanut Clubman or whatever you like. He, he has a good, interesting outlook. He understands the industry very well. He knows very well what it's all about. And that he's given us a, a kind of a helpful way of thinking about fragrances for the average person. He is articulate, he is intelligent, he does all his videos not in his first language, he speaks German as his first language, he probably speaks some other languages, Not I can't claim to do that, and he still speaks English, not perfectly, but very, very well. We can all understand what he's saying, and he makes some articulate points. Now I know he does the clowning stuff, let's move on to that next. That again shows that he's quite a smart guy. He does the daft stuff on TikTok. Many of us fragrance reviewers have been very slow to go onto TikTok. It's not an ideal format for a fragrance thing. I've gone on there now. You can follow the link in the description. I do silly stuff on there too because that's what you've got to do on TikTok. He's done all the stuff with his top off on there. And you know, he is. A, people say Jeremy's just a clown. He knows he's a clown when he's on TikTok. That's He's multi-talented. He can do different things. Can you imagine? I don't want to pick on anyone specific. So let's try and pick on... Um, who should we pick on? Let, let's just say another of the big fragrance reviewers that we've all watched for many years, the ones who come up pretty high in your feed. Can you imagine them making you laugh or, or be it, at least making you go, wow, what the heck did he do on TikTok? No, because most of them are boring. They are. They're mostly pretty bland, boring YouTubers. Jeremy may be many things. He's not boring. I, I like him for that. You know why Chanel would never do a banana or melon fragrance? It's because both of these are synthetic ingredients in the perfume world. You can't extract perfume oil out of a watermelon. You can't extract perfume oil out of a banana. And second reason why Chanel would never do a banana or watermelon fragrance, those are tropical fruits and not French fruits. So Chanel rather uses bergamot or the French lavender. I just love little things like this from Jeremy. Uh, thanks for telling us that you can't extract the oil from a banana. I guess I maybe I didn't necessarily know that, but it sounds kind of silly. Uh, the thing about the Chanel, I mean, I don't suppose that every ingredient they always use is French, is it? There must be ingredients, labdanum and things. I mean, you know, there's a lot of ingredients they must use that aren't French, but yeah, you kind of get the point. I just love the contrast. He's got the in-depth knowledge and then he does the silly little things like this. And of course, all the daft ones where he dances around in his underpants. Well, hey, he's got variety. He's got variety and charisma. Last but not least, last but not least, we're going to do one where he talks about the most expensive fragrances money can buy. It's very concentrated. I, I do get the saffron. Yeah. Saffron, by the way, is the most expensive spice on earth. Saffron, you know, super expensive spice. I like it. Okay, we did not break the 1,000 euro barrier, but almost 983. It's surprisingly fresh. I like it. Man, <laughs> 1,000 euros. You know how much? <laughs> I recently heard that in the Costco you could buy 50 pounds of white rice for $35. So 35 times 3 would be something like... No, wait a second. <laughs> I have to calculate how many pounds of rice we would get from this. 35 euros. So Thirty-five dollars. Oh, that, that's even dollars. Okay, so. Zehn sind 350, 20, 500 pounds. Well, you guys can make the calculation, but I assume 
we could almost have one ton of white rice, which would last you, I assume, for a whole lifetime. <laughs> or this fragrance. <laughs> crazy, crazy. But that's luxury, right? Okay, so he goes to the store, tries out this Bodicea one, and it's, you know, nine, 980 euros, nearly a thousand euros. Absolutely outrageous. To be honest, you know, this video, again, he's gone to the store. It's not boring. It's not a guy with a, a wall behind him, a bland, boring YouTuber. He's gone out. There's a, the nice lady in the store there. He's got confidence. He's standing there. He looks great in a suit, by the way. His video quality is amazing, like really, really bright, really good sound. I put the clips in my editor. And even when you kind of put it in the editor where, when you're just kind of editing it and you put it on the big screen, it tends to degrade it, but he's still like really HD. He uses a great camera. His production level is excellent. And then he's talking very confidently about the price of the fragrance. He makes some good points. Very funny, weird. He's kind of geeky and weird. I know he used to be into gaming and stuff. So he's, he's more of a nerd than he perhaps might seem. Sorry, Jeremy, I like you. Um, but he kind of talks about how many bags of rice you could buy with this. And it, he has got this kind of geek brain, actually, that uh, doesn't come out all the time, but it comes out there. The video was actually good because for the ordinary person, it would be just, you know, it's one of those videos, oh, wow. I can't believe people spend 500, 900 euros on a fragrance. Same as you get a producer Michael video about, oh my God, who would spend 500,000 pounds on a watch, you know, that kind of stuff, 23 million pounds for a run of the mill mansion in LA. You know, it's it's just that kind of wow factor stuff. So his videos are good, they're different, they're not, I mean, God knows, guys, I'm just gonna be, I'm not gonna be specifically horrible about any other YouTuber. I need to up my game on YouTube. The other YouTube channels, we've already said fucking Archie's bit, so I might as well say and on YouTube, the bigger channels, no specific one mentioned, fucking boring, just they, if so formulaic, they churn out the same crap, top 10 this, best fragrance for autumn, compliment beast, yawn, yawn, bloody yawn, at least Jeremy's different, at least Curly Fragrance is different because she's raunchy and different. At least the small guys who just talk about vintage stuff and don't do any editing are a little bit different, but they don't put the work in quite to the level that Jeremy does. Last point then, he deserves it because he damn well wants it. He wants to be the number one fragrance guy in the world so bad. He's so focused, he's so driven, he's up before me. He's working hard. He's uploading nowadays three or four videos every single day. There was a thing on his Instagram of him sat in a restaurant. He's still editing a video on his laptop. He never stops. He's working hard. He does deserve this. You see people, there was somebody, some clown criticizing him because he supposedly plugs H24 and it's not a genuine, there's no integrity in his reviewing and why is he plugging this fragrance all the time? And the guy's just completely boring, monotone voice, boring background this guy goes out he travels the world he works hard he's got charisma do i enjoy all of his videos no do i learn anything about fragrances often from him no because i'm me and i'm into old stuff and i've got my thing but i respect this guy i don't like people slagging him off i am morally speaking the leader of the fragrance community don't worry that's not in question i'm the leader but this guy is the number one in terms of popularity and it's for a reason. And guess what, guys? It's not because he's an asshole. It's not because he cheated. It's not because people are totally stupid, although a lot of people are largely. It's because he deserves it. Facts are stubborn things. Stubborn things and hard for some of you to take. Let me know what you fuckers think about that in the comments down below. I'll see you in the next one. Remember, whatever you're doing in life, let's project. And we... No, what is it? Sometimes life may stink, but we can always smell good. Bye-bye. <laughs>